Good morning and welcome to Monk House on Mondays. Today I have Dave Corteen with me and Dave runs Mosaic Health and Spa. How are you today, David? Yeah, I'm good, thanks, David. How are you? Excellent. Yeah, I'm very well, thank you. Do you know, it's really odd seeing you in a sweatshirt. I always see you in a suit. Always see you in a suit. It's, yeah, well, uh, I'm, I'm enjoying the, uh, the casual look. It's, uh, it's something I've rocked for about, about three and a half months now. So, yeah, I'm, <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not even sure where the suit is, but it will but definitely be dug out at some point soon. <laughs> OK, and the question is, of course, will your suit still fit? Because mine don't, because I've been quite active during lockdown. So have you been the same? Have you been able to get in your physical activity? Um, yeah, no, I'm, I've gone and gone down a notch on the on the old belt. So, yeah, so I've lost a bit of weight as well. So, yeah, I, I'm sure they'll fit, but I'm just going to look. I'm, I'm just not going to fill it quite as much as I was before. Quite as well as you did. So, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. OK, well, my ambition is not to refill it. My ambition is to buy a new suit or a couple of new suits. So, OK, so just do a quick intro for us. What does what does Mosaic Alpha Spud do? Yeah, so we're primarily a contract management business. We we operate 25 sites across the UK. Uh, predominantly in hotels so we run the health club and the day spa part of the hotel providing the staff and all the operating systems the software etc and providing the backup support to the to the teams that are in there so we employ just over 450 staff um, of which 446 at the moment are furloughed um, and yeah that's what we do so so we we work on performance uh, pace to pay so so we only earn if we deliver for our clients which keeps us focused and on our on our um, targets what we need to do um yeah we've been going for 33 years and we sort of evolved from being primarily health clubs into health clubs and day spas that's the way we've evolved the business and over the last nine years we've also owned a couple of our own sites so we own a big standalone health club a day spa an indoor tennis center in shrewsbury and we also own a big uh, health club and day spa really big day spa uh, down at Hereford, a place called Homer Park. So those are two okay. sort of standalone sites that we that we uh, that we own and operate. Mm, excellent. Okay. So what was lockdown like for you guys? How how you know the, the spa and the treatment side of stuff was being was really quite popular, wasn't it? People were treating themselves. They were spending quite a lot of money. So sure. how, how did you find lockdown for the spa particularly? Um, well, I think the, the difference with the spa is, you know, with the members in the health club, you just simply write to them as we did yeah. immediately. Lockdown happened and said, look, don't worry, uh, we're going to provide you with some online support, but we're not going to charge you anything. You know, we've frozen your memberships. We won't collect from you, um, but enjoy our online classes and content for free whilst we're closed. So that was really straightforward mm -hmm. and a quick message to get out there. Obviously, spa guests are not members, so it's much more difficult to have that detail. Uh, a lot of people have got vouchers. People have bought vouchers. They've given them away as a present. So you've yeah. got all these, you don't even know who's got your voucher. And you've got all these people that are like panicking about their yeah. their vouchers and because they've got an expiry date and what will happen. So so we've put messages on our website. We've put messages on social media. And then we've had to deal with a few more queries coming in of people going, look, I've got my voucher, but it runs out in June. What can I do? Because we're in lockdown. So again, we just said to people, we're extending your your voucher date and, right. and we'll, we'll we'll do that so that's the only that's the only difference really um you know people buy spas far less regularly than 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 health clubs but um but it's a big important part of it mm, no absolutely I, I know your team are incredibly busy on that that moment on the run up to christmas as you're selling the vouchers yeah for the spas you know the numbers keep coming across the door as it were through the, through the offices around how many you've sold and things it's absolutely brilliant and, yeah, and, that, you, and that's part of the problem in terms of the timing of this i was just gonna say that's part of the problem in terms of the timing of this because of course we have black friday which is around the end of november and then you have all the christmas vouchers well we we sell we sell over a quarter of a million pounds of vouchers in 24 wow. days uh, yeah. at christmas time and of course people only had sort of january and february really mm -hmm. to redeem those so there is an awful lot of vouchers out there that we've got that we've got to redeem so that is that yeah. is our challenge the timing of this lockdown wasn't great from a spa voucher perspective yeah no that's brilliant and you you mentioned shrewsbury club um, which has got tennis courts uh, my daughter's back playing tennis back on one-to-one -one lessons have you found a, a big increase in demand for outdoor courts at shrewsbury yeah I mean, it's brilliant i mean we just we took the decision because there, there are there are outdoor courts we've got we've got uh, four of them um we can't open the club at all so there's very limited facilities so we basically said right we're opening it to members and it's still all free because actually just felt that was a positive message and it's not the type of experience that we want people to have really uh you know they can't go in the in the, in the club and, and use the mm. coffee bar or anything else so um 
great take up from members. What's been really interesting is, that, is I think a lot of our members who never normally play tennis have all started to play tennis. So we've had lots of yeah. new people booking courts, which is mm -hmm. which is great. I think people are just desperate to do some kind of activity picked up on tennis. Um, yeah. And then when we were allowed to do group coaching, that's just gone down a storm. I mean, we have we have over 200 children that are part of our tennis program at the Shrewsbury yeah. Club. So it's a big part of what we do. So and there's only can only be, as you probably know, five coaching at any one time so we always knew that was going to be busy we thought we'd try a couple of tennis express which is sort of a get into tennis for adults kind of mm -hmm. course it's a six week course and it's you know it's a bit like rusty rackets or that sort of thing picking it up yeah. if you've never played for a long long time and trying it and we we, we we thought we'd try a couple of those that's been phenomenal so we filled right. six of those courses so we've had to put six on and okay. all six are full with obviously so that's 30 people that are all new to tennis and we probably could have run a few more we just haven't got the time to do it so yeah the, the tennis courts have never been used like they are it's really busy really um yeah really really popular and it yeah. and it's been great to see and, and again re responded too well by the members because actually it's something that they they can actually do yeah, and I, I saw the LTA put out some social media recently. There's a 250% increase in demand for outdoor courts at the moment. So they were using that as part of the push to say, let's get indoor courts reopened as well. So you're contributing yeah. to, that, to that, that, that drive for more tennis, which is just fantastic. It's brilliant. So how's the, the spa and the hair and things like that? What are the plans? How are you going to reopen? So yeah, so we've we've got two hair salons. So right. um, obviously we we can reopen those on the on on this Saturday, the fourth of July, um, mm -hmm. which we're obviously doing. Um, been completely inundated with with demand for bookings as you as you sure. as you'd expect for that. Um, uh, so so that's fine. We're we're kind of managing that, and then uh, and obviously the spa, pretty much like the health club. I mean, we we were kind of gearing ourselves up to be ready to go for for the fourth of July because there was the possibility yeah. that we would open then. I mean, if I'm honest, you know, I always felt that that just political uh, benefit and economic benefit would outweigh scientific uh, rules. So you know. It was no surprise to me that pubs and restaurants are open before health clubs because they're going to generate so much more revenue and the government is desperate to get in cash. It cannot be justified on a scientific basis because clearly you can maintain social distancing and put in measures and barriers far more effectively in a health club setting than you can in a pub or a restaurant. But, mm. you know, in terms of the, gen of the money that's generated, pubs and restaurants are going to do more. So we were ready to go on the 4th of July. Not surprised that we couldn't. And now it's just a case of trying to keep the staff and everybody yeah. really focused so they're ready to come back they're still furloughed but obviously we, we can bring them back now on this flexi furlough to make sure that the facilities mm -hmm. are clean to put in some of the procedures that we're going to do you know create one-way systems eliminate as many touch points as possible yeah. and try and maximize the usage so you know we've done a yeah. few things at some of the sites like at shrewsbury we're bringing in a an outdoor dedicated fitness area that's going to be undercover right. So that's being built literally as we speak. Um, we got planning permission in the lockdown to extend our gym. There was an obvious way that we could extend the gym is on right. two floors. So we think social distancing could be here for a while. So yeah. so actually one of the things that we've done is to say, well, let's pull out um, and extend the downstairs uh, gym area. And that might well enable us to cope better with social distancing so that's about a three month project that we hope to start really soon mm -hmm. so you know we've done a few bits around around that and we're just really focusing on making sure that everybody's trained up and ready to come back good excellent and motivated you know legend we're only a small team but we do a monday night quiz and it's just been lovely just catching up with people and having a bit of a laugh and just reconnecting and i, and I guess that's really important when you're in an organization like you with over 450 people just to keep them connected to what you're doing yeah Absolutely, Dave. I think the thing is that we, we've worked on a number of ways of doing that. It's much harder. I mean, I think when you've got a small team, it's somehow mm -hmm. it, you can all get on a Zoom call or whatever. And, and actually, that, that's easier to do. And we do that with our head office guys once a week. Um, with all of the staff, what we've tried to do is keep them connected. So we've got an app uh, that we use, uh, an, uh, an app on the phone that everyone's got. And that's been really useful to get communication yeah. out. But we've done lockdown Olympics. So we've done lots right. of activities and everything else. We did a great thing. We we Because we, we, our logo our name is mosaic and so our logo is kind of like the m of mosaic tiled right. in in different colors so it's so mm -hmm. you know it's that whole kind of using the mosaic name and, and visualizing it so we got people we said to people right at home be as creative as you can to recreate the mosaic logo so we have uh -huh. people doing it with video cases cd cases <laughs> 
but one guy repainted the mosaic logo on his lounge wall. <laughs> so so yeah so we've had lots of fun with people doing really really random things and and just sharing it with everybody and it gets lots of conversation and banter yeah. going and it replaces that as you say it replaces that whole connection that people have because work's a big part of what we do so actually our work relationships are a big part of our of our daily lives so so mm-hmm. it's been a big hole so we've tried to sort of fill that as best as best we can so yeah that's been the, that's been really important and now obviously we're doing lots of training to make them feel confident around COVID-19 understand some of the myths around it and and yeah we've done a training series for the managers called recreate mosaic because actually right. we're gonna we're gonna need to re- reshape this business because we're coming back yeah. to a very different world mm, absolutely and yeah I think you said at the beginning is it 33 years now you've been with mosaic you've been doing yeah. this which is years. Yeah. a shed load of time you know i was only four when you started honestly really um, i wasn't much older <laughs> myself <laughs> <laughs> but in, in in the last couple of minutes that we've got Dave, and and because of your the longevity of the sector your knowledge your competency at what you do i know you've been part of the the conversations with uk active and with the representative organization so in the last couple of minutes just talk about the the, the level of activity and work that you've put into supporting the sector through being part of that voice that uk active has yeah, sure. I mean, it's not just me. I mean, I think, you know, there's been there's been a lot of people. I think one of the things that UK Active have done brilliantly over this period is the way they've tried to communicate with as many of the CEOs across the across the industry as they can and get everybody involved and get feedback in. There's been a number of different working groups. So some of my colleagues have been working on sort of the technical aspects of it. I've been working with the, with the other CEOs and we've been on, you know, twice weekly calls. We've been working on a strategy and around protocols that everybody as an industry has, has brought into. And UK Active have headed that up and the team there I think you know in a crisis like we've gone through something like UK Active it's either gonna it's either going to be found out or it's going to be kind of coming into its finest hour and I think without doubt UK Active have, have been in their finest hour they've done a fantastic job at pulling the industry together and lobbying a pretty high level into mm-hmm. into into the government to try and influence what's happened and certainly some of the things around the furlough scheme and the way that that's worked i think have been influenced by what uk actually have fed into dcms and a few of the other government mm-hmm. organizations but we've got, we've got a lot to be thankful for for what uk yeah. active have done sure it would have been good if we could have been open on the 4th of july but mm-hmm. that's not a lack of any effort or or commitment from uk active that's a purely the government looking at the numbers and going we're going to make a lot more money out of pubs and restaurants than we are mm-hmm. health clubs it's a tough decision, tough for all of us. But but yeah, no, UK Active have done a really good job, and it's been great to be part of designing these protocols that that we can put in place to, to demonstrate that we can open safely and and we can make our health clubs safe. No, absolutely, we can, and and that whole confidence thing is really important. You know, we've done as Legendnet now those surveys. We've spoken to one hundred and twelve thousand customers, and it's almost fifty fifty around confidence about returning. It's it's really yeah. interesting that dichotomy. You, and you know, I live on the outskirts of Leicester. My neighbours are going brilliant. Yeah, great. We're, we're not in lockdown. However, it's going to be really interesting to see how that type of thing changes. I think there's another 10 cities around the country where the R number is going up and people are starting to be concerned. So um, that the whole point of, of being able to get this right and make sure people are confident is really important for us as a sector. So I'm really pleased that with what UK Active has done and, and, and your contribution, Dave. So um, thank you. Give us your last tip for reopening. So the last couple of seconds we've got, what's your biggest tip for reopening? What should we really think about doing differently? Um, I think it's to just get across the message that actually of how important exercise is, that actually it's so much more than a digital experience. So I know there's been lots of people talking about the digital experience going to make a big difference and going back, people will just be still happy to exercise at home. I couldn't disagree more with that statement. I think if we make our clubs friendly, if we if we deliver the right advice, people want that whole kind of community aspect. That's what they're going to yeah. be craving, having had three months of four months of being in lockdown. So let's just get back, extol the virtues of exercise and the benefits of it in terms of building up our immune system, in terms of helping us to, to battle uh, being uh, a bit overweight, which are two massive factors in terms of, of fighting things like the coronavirus. Yeah. And let's just make sure that that we, we we love our members and make them feel even more special than we normally do, because that's what's yeah. going to make the, the difference between why people will join health clubs as opposed to running around in the park or or exercising at home. Yeah, absolutely. And on that note, we're going to finish. David, that is brilliant. Thank you so much for your time. Take care. Look out. No problem. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Bye.